Hello, I'm Zoe Cunningham and this is episode two of Tech Talk Fest. Coming up in episode two. No more fashion faux pas as we take to the streets to find out more about StarNibble.com. We find out which smartphone's IQ doesn't pass the test. Exclusive footage of our first ever Tech Talk Fest event will show you how to become an expert DJ by using Mixcloud. I've come to Tech City Shoreditch to meet online fashion guru Heather Bird, founder of revolutionary new site Style Nibble. If you go to an amalgamation site such as ShopStyle and search on, say, jeans, you'll get over 10,000 results, which is too many for even the most ardent fashionista. Style Nibble helps solve this problem by using three techniques to get you the best personalised results. When you first go to the site, you'll take a style quiz, which will form your underlying style. Then, when you're given recommendations, you can say what you like and what you don't like, which will be stored against your history and used to choose recommendations for you in the future. Finally, everyone is assigned a real human personal stylist to help you complete your look. Heather, thanks so much for coming to see us. Where did you get the idea for Style Nibble? I first had the idea in my last company when I worked for Shoe Dazzle, which is the US online shoe subscription company. They have part of their service, which is styling service. But actually, I realised people loved it, but it wasn't really used properly because they only had one line of shoes. Um, so you couldn't really do great personalisation. I thought, how cool would this be if you did it across all brands, all retailers, and for all different areas of fashion? So that's really how the idea came about. So what proportion does each of the initial quiz that people take, the, the history of what they like and don't like, and the actual personal stylist recommendations, what proportion do each of those make to the recommendations? It's not really a proportion, it's more of a kind of a waterfall process. So each week the stylist will sit down and decide on a theme or a trend that they want to curate the boutique around. Uh, once they've gone, done that, they'll go and find all the best items from across the high street um, and different designer brands. They then add those to the system and tag them in such a way that depending on your style results, you'll see different items in your boutique. And then, depending on the history, so the stuff that you've told us you don't like, we apply a filter over the top of that to remove those items. So what are the best features of Style Nibble? I think firstly the best thing is just to have personalised recommendations from across all of the high streets. So instead of you having to trawl through all the different shops, we just do that for you. And it's unbiased, so we really genuinely do think these are the best items. Secondly, you have your own personal stylist, so if you have a question, a query or just want advice, there is someone that genuinely you can go and ask for that help. Um, and I also think it's really great for discovery, because if you're like me, I tend to go to the same five or six shops all the time, um, but we know what you like, we know your sense of style, so we can start to recommend smaller boutiques and smaller labels to you that you might not have heard before, which I think is really exciting. Um, so your stylists, they also blog, they're on Twitter, they can answer personal style questions. And um, so the whole experience is kind of more than just a website. Absolutely. We wanted it to not just be kind of a shopping destination. It was about fashion entertainment, much more like a magazine, actually, I'd say. So we really wanted to create a personalised magazine online. Um, and I think to do that, social is really important. So wherever you are, whether it's on Twitter or Tumblr, Facebook, Pinterest, any of those places, you can get your fashion fix from our stylists for that day. And so what are your plans for the future? Um, so many plans, but the next things that we're doing are Facebook integration and a brilliant mobile experience so that wherever you are, you can kind of use our service and the site and some really exciting partnerships with brands and retailers. Heather, thanks so much for coming to see us. It truly is a brilliant sight. I'm actually wearing a skirt that I bought on your stylist Olivia's recommendation. And we at Tech Talk Fest wish you all the best. Yes, I do shop online. 
Um, I really love it because you can just do it instantly. You don't have to get out of the house and go to places and everything just at the click of the button. Uh, yes, I shop online. Not loads, but I've bought a few things. I bought the shoes I'm wearing today online. Um, I tend to buy shoes online actually because I, it just. I hate shoe shopping and going around loads of shops. I think Star Nibble is a service that I would use because I do, I do follow fashion and I do follow certain celebrities. I suppose it'd be quite interesting to find out what they think you'd like. So if, if you put in all your answers and they can come up with something ridiculous that you'd hate, then it'd just be quite interesting. It's estimated that over 50% of Britain's mobile phone users own a smartphone. Once the market leader, Research in Motion or RIMS Blackberry have shown a sharp drop in sales over recent months. More and more users are choosing to switch to iPhone or Android. We asked you which smartphone you prefer and why. Blackberry reminds me of, well, sadness because whenever I use it, I feel like crying. I've got a Nokia Lumia. It's good for, for like internet searching and stuff like that. Uh, it's unreliable with emails, unreliable with internet, and um, just generally kind of crap. Because I'm not very technical-minded, maybe I could have got my BlackBerry to work better for me. It seemed slower for internet, not as much content. You couldn't get as much stuff onto your BlackBerry. An outdated operating system, regular phone crashes, and unreliable RIM services have allowed superior handsets like the iPhone to overtake BlackBerry's worldwide sales. Not to mention the infamous RIM network crash last year that left every single BlackBerry user unable to access their email or internet services. Because of BlackBerry's affordability, it dominates many developing markets such as South Africa or India. In the UK, it's mostly used by young people because the handsets are cheap and they get free RIM messaging services. RIM have, however, stated that they plan on refocusing their product on the corporate market. We'll have to wait to see how that goes, but in the meantime, if you're going to need to access your email, you might be better off sticking with Android or iPhone. to this, the first live Tech Talk Fest event, where we're going to be getting in and amongst the amazing new startups here in Tech City. I'd like to introduce my guest, Nathan Starr. Radio as a broadcast medium is losing relevance, it's losing audience, especially amongst the younger audience. What is Mixcloud? We are tapping into the wisdom of the experts and giving listeners one place to listen to the best music curators in the world. And we have about 250,000, in fact, over 250,000 expert DJs, tastemakers, radio stations, um, uploading content to Mixcloud, over a million and a half sets and radio shows that we're hosting. So it's an, it's an enormous archive of content. So our market opportunity is to be um, the leading recommendation platform online for, for radio. A lot of radio that people consume online is actually illegitimate. Um, and the rights holders are not getting monetized for the music you listen to. We managed to get the first ever license for recorded music rights. We have a blanket license with a collection society that represents them, which means that on Mixcloud you can play any music you want as a DJ. Uh, you don't have the restrictions that people might have on, on services like Spotify. I'm Zoe Cunningham from Zone One Radio and I'm here with the Jermaine sisters. Ella, Clara and Georgia, over on tour from Adelaide, Australia. At Mixcloud we collect set lists from radio shows and DJ sets and, and club sets from some of the best curators and DJs in the world. And all of those sets are laid out with the track lists. So let's play uh, Take My Hand by Georgia Jemine, followed by Beautiful Day by U2. And so he put together this really cool app where you stick in a track name and it suggests, based on the set lists, what you should play next if you're a DJ. And then you can select that track and it gives you the next suggestion. So literally within a minute you can build a set list 
and you can be as good as the world's best DJs. In fact, better because it's an aggregation of, of the, you know, the wisdom of the experts. We are not just a celestial jukebox where you can access millions and millions of tracks, your favourite albums, your favourite artists. We are a community. We have tastemakers and curators uploading content that, that we want our listeners to engage with. And we really want to focus on that interaction because that's why people love radio. We focus on doing advertising well. We want to help brands connect with audiences um, through great engaging content, not ads that interrupt the experience of, of the, the consumer. Red Bull is our, probably our biggest and favorite uh, client. They, they run a, um, a DJ competition globally in about 25 markets. Every single set from those events is then uploaded to Mixcloud and we help them drive an audience online. Um, and their strategy is, you know, we've got these awesome events offline, but we want to connect with just as many people, if not more, online. Our vision is that any brand that, that is doing something in music, that considers music as important to their marketing strategy and the way they want to engage with consumers, should have a profile on Mixcloud. find out what the people here think about the event. Yeah, Nikhil, it was really nice to see Nikhil, um, to, to see who's behind the SoundCloud and um, it was really interesting to hear. Great event for networking, met a lot of people involved in technology and media, which is where I'm particularly from. It's a really great event. Uh, I thought the whole concept of, of curating uh, and uh, creating a medium for people to get involved in things uh, the whole idea of building a community is very, very important. The speaker was very inspiring. It's great to hear someone who's taken their idea from the start on their own without corporate backing and found a niche and made something of it. If you've enjoyed hearing about great new startups like online radio platform Mixcloud, then please keep watching at www.techtalkfest.com.